Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you to the choir for that beautiful rendering. Um, I was just talking to Nikki. When are we ever being able to join in with them? It's very frustrating. But hopefully in a few weeks, things are improving, we hope. Um, Bands of Marriage, again. I published the Bands of Marriage between Richard James Perrett and Nicola Jane Lehman, uh, both of this parish, but marrying at St. Michael's and All Angels, Thornhill. If any of you know any cause or just impediment by these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. This is for the third time of asking. Let us pray for the couple as they approach the marriage. Heavenly Father, bless this couple as they prepare to exchange vows as man and wife. We pray that it will be a fruitful marriage and that they will have many years together. In Jesus' name, amen. And I've got one announcement here. It's quite important. Um, in two weeks' time, not next week, in two weeks' time, it's our APCM meeting. Um, as you know, it's just been a chaotic year. I think we had the last one in November, but it should have been in May. Anyway, we're catching up now, and according to um, <clears throat> the diocese, we have to meet before the end of May. So, two weeks' time, that's the 30th, I think, is it 30th? Um, we will have our APCM after the service. It'll be a shortened service, and then we'll go straight on to the meeting. Um, at the back on the table, um, and you can ask the wardens if you have any problems, um, there are nomination forms for wardens, PCC, and all other officers in the church. Now, if you wish to be nominated or want to nominate somebody else, please do so put them on the forms, because I believe once the forms are filled in, they have to go on the notice board. So don't forget that. If you can do it today, so much the better. So two weeks' time, um, APCM, same time in the church. Would you please stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Please sit down. And so here we come to a time of confession when we have the opportunity to bring before God all those things we omitted to do and those things we shouldn't have done last week. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Let's have a moment of silence as we look over the past week and remember at the times when we disobeyed God. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, 
with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 15. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group number in about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who served as a guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in the ministry. For, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted and let there be no one to dwell in it. And may another take his place of leadership. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time. The Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. <clears throat> so they proposed two men, Joseph called Barabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belonged. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias, so he was added to the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel of St. John, beginning at chapter 17, beginning at verse 6. Glory to you, O Lord. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine and the glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by the name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so that the scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the word has hated them, for they are not of the world, more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil ones. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you send me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. This is the gospel of the Lord. Pray grace to you, O Christ. I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please sit down.
Last Thursday, the church was celebrating the Ascension, <clears throat> the day when Jesus left this earth and went back to heaven. Often a forgotten feast, people tend to look at it as an end. But the Ascension of Jesus Christ is not an ending, but a beginning, not a departure, but an arrival. So in our Acts reading this morning, which takes place just after the Ascension, we find Jesus' followers probably quite bemused by all that has happened, but waiting, simply waiting. The church is now in that period between the Ascension and the arrival of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. It must have been a very difficult time for Jesus' followers. They are asking themselves, will Jesus fulfill his promise and send the Holy Spirit? Scholars have worked out that it was a full 10 days between Jesus' ascension into heaven and the coming of the Holy Spirit, which is why we do not celebrate Pentecost until next Sunday. They were in limbo. Our country seems to be in limbo at the present time. Tomorrow, more restrictions are to be lifted to give us, as they say, more freedom. And then we have to wait until the middle of June to see what else we can do to ease our way back to normality. And of course, there's the uncertainty that the virus may continue to spread again. Now that we have a priest in charge appointed for our church, we are also waiting, as there may be changes ahead for all of us. So it is easy to visualize how the apostles felt in those 10 days after the ascension, uncertain to say the least. Yet from our first reading, it is interesting to note that Peter, the impetuous apostle, who had denied Jesus, took the lead. He knew Jesus would fulfill his promise, so he decided to prepare for the time after the Holy Spirit had arrived, when they would be going out and spreading the good news. For a start, Jesus was no longer one of the 12, and they needed a replacement. <clears throat> the number 12 has always been significant in Jewish culture, and as Jesus originally chose 12 apostles, they wanted to keep to this. There were two possible candidates, Matthias and Justice, and it seems that the one criteria for selection was that they had to know Jesus since he was baptized by John, and also they had to be witnesses to the resurrection. Matthias was chosen to replace Judas, or rather they would have said in those days, God chose him, as they used the well-known method of drawing lots, which to us in the 21st century is quite alien. But the apostles believed God's hand was in the midst of this process, so the right man was chosen. We know little about Matthias, although tradition tells us he went and spread the message of Jesus to Cappadocia, and Ethiopia. Justus, who could have felt slighted, which is very human, and could happen to us if we don't get chosen, became Bishop of Uthuopolis, which is today in modern Syria. So why were they so confident that the Holy Spirit would come, even after all that had happened to their friend Jesus? Our Gospel reading is basically this message Jesus gave them prior to when he was about to be crucified. And it is this passage that gave them hope, and it should also give us hope, even in the worst of times. Because often we are so busy praying to God that we forget he also prays for us. And in today's Gospel reading, this is exactly what Jesus is doing. On first glance of this passage, one tends to think this is part of Jesus' teaching. 
But no, these words are the words of Jesus addressed directly to God the Father. He is in trust in his disciples, whom he has known and loved throughout his earthly life, to his Father, who he knows, will care for them every bit as much as he has during his time here on earth. The fact that Jesus prayed for his disciples and is still praying for us must be of great encouragement. Note the ease which he addresses God the Father in this passage. The words flow as he explains the situation and asks clearly for his help. We could learn a lot about how we pray by looking at this passage, for sadly so many Christians at some parts of their lives have difficulty with prayer. Prayer is the heartbeat of the Christian faith. It is the communication with our God on a personal basis and sets us apart from non-believers and some other religions. Yet sometimes we feel that there is no one there, no one to listen, no one to answer. This is not uncommon and all we can do is persevere, firmly believing that God can hear us and we are not being ignored. Perhaps when Jesus, perhaps Jesus himself thought this at times in his life. On the cross he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yet at that stage, God was probably closer to him than he had ever been. And it is the same for us. God is always there. Sometimes we say to ourselves, what shall I pray for? <clears throat> Does God really want to hear all my concerns? God is interested in everything about us. And if something is weighing on your mind at a particular time, then bring it to God. And this is exactly what Jesus does in our gospel passage. For his main concern at this time is, will his disciples be able to cope without him? There is another important point which Jesus also makes in this passage, verse 17, and I quote, They are not of this world, <coughs> even as I am not of it. Here is one of the biggest dilemmas modern day Christians face. We have to live in a world whose standards are not as Jesus has taught us. And I know we all find this very hard on times. But it is comforting to know that God and his son Jesus know exactly what we are facing in our daily lives and are praying for us. <clears throat> this passage also shows yet again the human side of Jesus. Like any leader or teacher, he is concerned about how his students will cope when the Holy Spirit comes. But as we will hear next Sunday, the Holy Spirit came spectacularly in the form of tongues of fire and the apostles were transformed. As we wait for this celebration, let us all open our hearts to receive a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bearing in mind that next Sunday we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming and we think this week how we can get closer to him, shall we stand and ask and profess the faith of our church? Please stand. <clears throat> Do you believe in trusting God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in trust in his son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sit for our intercessions. Let us pray for the world and the church and let us thank God for his goodness. Father God, we thank you for our gospel reading this morning and its example of how Jesus prayed and talked to you. Help us to follow his example and always be ready and willing to pray for ourselves and others. Creator God, we thank you for our world, for the beauty all around us, and as the weather warms and our part of the world gets more colourful, help us to see your glory in all creation. We pray for your guidance as we care for our world and for your spirit to show us all how we can do better at protecting our planet and using its resources more wisely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we pray for the nations of the world. We thank you for all who work for peace. We pray for the people in Israel and Palestine, for the families of those who have died in the conflict, for those in authority on all sides, that a way may be found to bring peace. We thank you for the country we live in and that we have the privilege of voting for our government. We pray for all who were elected into various roles up and down the country last week and we ask that they would be aware that all authority on earth comes from you and that they will all be answerable to you for the decisions and plans they make. We pray that they will be governed wisely. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, we thank you for the church family here at Osset and Gawthorpe. We thank you and pray for the great news of Reverend Stephen Harvey, who will be joining us in July as priest in charge for South Osset and here at Trinity. We pray that as Stephen and his wife and children prepare for the next stage in their journey, that you'll be with them. We thank you, those who have held the reins in our time of interregnum and that through these challenging times. And we pray that we will all be guided and inspired by your Holy Spirit as they lead us in the coming year. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Gracious God, we thank you for the advances that have been made in science and technology. We thank you for the way this has made communication and working easier during the pandemic. We pray for those who will be able to protect the people who make these things we use for being exploited and underpaid for their labour. We pray that these advances in science and communication will help to make sure that all people around the world will be able to have the coronavirus vaccination they need for everyone's protection. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Loving God, we thank you for our families, our friends and our neighbours. This morning we hold in our hands those who are watching at home. 
that we may not only hold them in your hands, but in our hearts too. We pray that as our restrictions on meeting together are lifted, we will continue to be careful and loving in the most venerable and respect of all who are not ready yet to go out and about. Help us to enjoy our greater freedoms in safety. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful God, we thank you for all our NHS staff, for the free avail availability of medication and hospital treatment. Help us to be mindful of all who have to pay for their medication and treatment, especially those who can't afford. We pray for all those who are awaiting treatment of any kind and those who are in our hospitals today receiving the treatment that they need. We pray too for all those who are mourning the death of a family member, loved one or friend either recently or whose anniversaries occur at this time. In a moment of quiet, please name before God anyone on your heart this morning. May they be aware of your presence with them and know that you love them and care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the lives and witnesses of those early disciples and for the generations of your people who believed their testimonies and who believed and trusted in your Son. Send us out from here this morning to continue their work and fulfil your calling on our lives in the power of your Holy Spirit and to the best of our ability. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all our saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Please be seated.
The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And now we give you thanks because in his victory over the grave, a new age has dawned. The long reign of sin is ended. A broken world is being renewed and humanity is once again made whole. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood, shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed to your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.